Okay, welcome to our second video blog. Uh, today we're going to start looking at the benefits of knowledge management. Why should it be, as we're calling this blog, your weapon of choice when it comes to strategic development in organisations? We'll look at the strategic input, but then we're going to look at the operational side as well. One of the things that we want to start looking at is how knowledge management can help organisations navigate the knowledge economy. One of the things that we want to say is that we need to get away from looking at knowledge management as an, something that stands in isolation, an operational response. We want to start looking at it as something that informs strategy, that is proactive within the organisation and really speaks to value development when it comes to competitive advantage. So that's what we're going to be talking about and this is it. Okay. So if we're going to bring value to an organisation through value-based operational functions or whether it's going to be bringing value to the strategic aims of the organisation, we've got to start looking at the environment. I'm going to give you a key example at the moment. There's a company that we are, we're currently talking to in Wales. Over the last four or five years, they have had free reign on a market. They've almost developed their own market space. Now what's happening is other organisations have picked up on how successful they are and they're starting to move into this market space. Now the, the question that I've posed is the key resources, they're a service-based uh, service based company and the key resources are the people. There are people within their IT department and people within their sales team for example that you would see as having high amounts of expertise, been with the company from the start, grown the company, innovated and I posed the question, which was basically, what's been done to protect that knowledge? And the response was, actually, we haven't done anything yet. Perhaps that's why we were in there in the first place. But what this tells us, as companies move into a market space, one of the quickest ways that they can catch up, that they can start to match the capabilities of the lead organization is to recruit staff in, to find out how things have been done, to add to their own capabilities in the first place. Now then, if we agree that we have to keep that knowledge, if we agree that if we don't, it's going to impact our competitive advantage, then we've got to start becoming proactive. We're looking at the environment, we see people moving into our space, and if we don't react to it, what are the consequences? Loss of competitive advantage, diminished decision-making capability, that loss of knowledge, that, that loss of expertise that when we're delivering the service to the customer, are we actually lowering our own standards? Then on top of that, aside from the fact that we're actually going to lose our competitive advantage, what cost to relearn what you already knew? What cost on a knowledge management function that doesn't act in a proactive manner, see the problem in the environment and start protecting the organisation. We have all these conversations that knowledge management isn't establishing value, that knowledge management needs to demonstrate ROI. Well, why aren't we reacting to these things then? Because this is what's important to organisations. This is what will allow them to become resilient, sustainable, allow them to continue to grow, to continue to innovate. And if we don't do this, what cost? And who is responsible? Ultimately, it's ourselves as knowledge managers. Okay, one of the reasons I wanted to come to the beach today is to kind of demonstrate a little bit about knowledge. If you look, in the background here are lots of rocks. This, for me, is my knowledge. You've got stuff like here, which was basically how I learned to ride a bike and how I know how to ride a bike. Not much good to an organization at the moment, but it's part of my knowledge stock. Things like this. When I first started working with knowledge management, what actually made me think about the processes that inform knowledge management? My understanding of the complexity. Interesting. But this is basically my knowledge. And when it comes down to it, some of it will be of high value to an organization and some of it's useless. So you've got to be able to understand what you want to know, who knows it, how they know it, and you've got to be able to try and capture it. And this is where there's another problem. We take something like what we know about knowledge management and what we know about our model and our process. 
it's quite a lot. And the problem with knowledge, and you'll have seen it from the other blogs we've had, is the fact that there's a disparity between what people call knowledge and what actually knowledge is. Sometimes people are talking about knowledge and they're talking actually about information. Now then, what I know about knowledge management and the expertise I have, I try and put as much of it down on paper, I try and put it into blogs, I try and tell you here now. But ultimately, this represents what I know, and this is our friendly computer. And this is the problem, because ultimately, this doesn't fit in that. And that's what we've got to try and solve. And that's what this next part of the blog is about. Yeah. Okay. So there are going to be those of you out there that turn around and say, we are very good at capturing knowledge. And perhaps you are. But we've worked with quite a few companies now when we talk about lessons learned, post-action reviews, where people are turning around saying, we extract this valuable knowledge from our staff, we capture it, we upload it, we've got a library system. Excellent. I'll give you another example. We worked with one of the top pharmaceutical companies in the world. Uh, there's a case study on this, and I'll gladly put this as a, an external link for anybody who's interested. And one of the problems they had, they were using SharePoint. And out there is SharePoint. This is our knowledge. And people, through their lessons learned, capturing the knowledge, and then they were putting it out into SharePoint. And what was happening it was lost. They couldn't find it again. We talked to staff who'd been with them for five years. And those staff, they admitted, they'd uploaded lots and lots of information into SharePoint. Lots of lessons learned. Not once had they accessed it. We talked to staff about how many lessons learned they had accessed from other people. The answer, none. People who'd been there five years had never accessed anything put into SharePoint that way. So we went and talked to IT. The IT departments had no metrics to look at when knowledge was being accessed, these lessons learned. There were no metrics to see if they were reapplied somewhere. Ultimately, one big data dump. And the question is, I couldn't find my own knowledge right now. Would you be able to find it? Okay, so now then, knowledge management practitioners, the organization, we've picked up the signal from the environment. And what we've actually found out, and we'll go back to the case that we started with at the very beginning, is that we need to protect the knowledge. We need to understand who has this knowledge and expertise. And we need to do, we need to go through some sort of process that allows us to understand what they know. There's a process called concept mapping or knowledge mapping. And there's a guy out in the United States called Brian Moon. I'll actually put his link uh, and this blog for you so that you can look at what they do, how they do it. It's a process we subscribe to and it's something that we use. What we want to know is, what do you know? Where does the expertise lie? That core knowledge in your business that will impact your competitive advantage if you lose it. There are lots of things that we can then take from this, but some of the things that we want to know is, how do you know it? How do you know that it's actually quality knowledge? How is it being quality assured? Where did you learn it from? Who else knows this? How are you sharing it? All these types of things come into a knowledge ma mapping process that begins to allow you to find out exactly what somebody knows, how they make a decision, what knowledge they brought to bear on making that decision start to understand how to capture it. So at the end of this process we should have some sort of map of what somebody knows. From there the question becomes how do we start to embed it? Well now we've got some actual, we've got something explicit, we've got some, something written down but I've already said technology can't capture everything. I can't write everything down. So what we start to look at are very simple things like Succession planning. We start to look at if we have expertise in the organization. They've obviously got to a point where they have been high performers, they've been promoted, and we need to know who, is the, who are the potential successors. What does that succession pool look like? And how do we start getting the succession pool to interact with these people? How do we take this knowledge map 
and start to get the succession pool understanding it and using it. We start to look at things like communities of practice, very, very simple. We start to look at action learning hubs where we pose problems to these, this group, the experts with the potential successors, and we start to ask them, how would you do this? How will you take this forward? We start to get them involved in key decision-making processes. We start to look at HR. We look at the HR framework from everything from job descriptions, appraisal processes, right the way through to reward systems. And we get an understanding of whether the HR process is allowing people to map their knowledge, yeah, willingly take part in this process and share it. This is very, very important and we miss it. The other thing is that we start to assist or HR organize, uh, the HR function in moving from a competence-based approach to a competency-based approach. We start looking beyond efficiency and looking at effectiveness. We start looking beyond quality and looking at excellence. And we look at what differentiates these high performers, these people that have gained this expertise, that make great decisions, that we retain. We want to know how they do it. And all these things come to bear. So, I guess that where we get where we are now is going back to the beginning. Okay, so back to the beginning and back to a nice day on the beach. What we've got, we've got a situation where knowledge management needs to start becoming proactive, start, needs to start reading the environment. From there, we need to start understanding that actually knowledge management, it can't just be about technology, okay? This has got to be about people and people interacting, socializing, and applying their knowledge together. That's how we learn. Now then, for us, what we've tried to do today is show you that you can look at something very simple from the environment, something about the fact that there is the potential, the risk for knowledge loss, the cost of that, whether it be reputational, whether it be competitive advantage, or whether it's just the cost, actual cost, of relearning what you know. We then try to turn around and say, okay, if we look beyond technology, what have we got? A knowledge mapping process, actually identifying what you know, who knows it, how they know it, where they learnt it, all these things that come to bear on making decisions. From there, we turn around and say, how do you actually start to embed it? And you've got to know who to embed it with. So we've got to start looking at HR, succession planning. We've got to start looking at what actually made these people the experts in the first place? What made them high performers? What made them so exceptional and such an asset to the company? Once we understand that and we move beyond competence to competency, then we're really starting to get somewhere. And the one message I guess that I want you to take away is that knowledge management is very complex. It's not just about gathering information and redistributing it. It's actually about doing something with it, creating value, competitive advantage, contributing to strategic issues such as resilience, sustainability, growth, adaptive capacity, innovation, all these things we can deliver. And that's why knowledge management should be the weapon of choice. I hope you've enjoyed this and please keep the feedback coming and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.